If the people can listen for one minute, please, inshallah, this is important. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that the zakat al-fitrah should be given before the salah. Zakat al-fitrah, you can cut it back down. Just, yeah. Zakat al-fitrah should be given before the salah. In order for a person to um, have their um, mistakes during fasting or things that they did, that needs corrected to be um, removed by the Sakat al Fitra and must be given before we pray Salah. So, anybody that didn't give the Zakat al Fitra up until now, they should do so now before we start the Salah. If not, then they'll just get a regular Sadaqa rather than uh, the Sadaqat al Fitra. <laughs> they don't know that, Allah must die. Also, somebody told me to uh, remind the people to make the, make sure they have wudu, inshallah. So we're going to start lining up now, inshallah, wa ta'ala. Stow, to us. La takhtalifu, fa In the tasbit al-sukhuf, in tamam al-salah. Stow, line up, inshallah, shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot. This is the Sunnah of the Messenger. It's okay if I just move it closer to my mom. Okay. Let me turn it up. This is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you line up the whole side of your foot, the whole side of your shoulder. This goes for the men and the women. This is the way of the Prophet. This is not customary. Sisters should try to line up. Don't leave any gaps, please. Brothers as well, this is the Sunnah of the Prophet. An obligation from the Sunnah of the Prophet. Make sure that you line up. Stow to Ras, La Tartalifu, Fatartalifu Kolobakum, in the Taswit of Sufu, from in Tamam Sola. Until the people. The men can go to the right side. The men can go to the right side. Actually, um, it. Somebody from uh, each row, because of the um, quantity of people, try to help straighten the rows. This is also from the way of the Prophet, because it's difficult. From the sisters as well. Nobody should take it personal. Just try to help straighten the lines, inshallah. So, to us, la takhtalifu fa takhtalifu kulubuku. Al ka'ba, ka'ba, monke la monke. Straighten the rows, fill in the gaps, line up shoulder to shoulder and foot to foot. Try to make your lines as straight as possible. Straightening of the roads is part of perfecting the salah. Part of establishing the salah, the Messenger said to the Allah Alaihi Wasallam. Don't leave any gaps between you and the person to the right and the left of you. Don't be afraid to touch your brother. Don't be afraid to touch your sister. Should be a solid structure, no gaps between the shoulders. The feet as well should touch the whole side of your foot unless you have a deformity or a disability. This is the way of the Prophet. Please, no gaps. Stow to Ras. The Salat al Eid for those who need. Uh, Reminder, as we all need reminders, and those who don't know, we'll do seven takbirat in the first one. We make the first takbirat, that's opening takbirat, that doesn't count. Then we do seven, out loud. Then after that, the recitation of the Quran, we pray like we normally pray. And then we stand back up for the next raka'ah, then we do five takbirat. This is the Salat of Eid. 
Insha'Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Stow tarasum. La takhtalifu fa takhtalifa kulubukum. Allahu Akbar. 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 Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Mimalik Yawm Ad-Din, Iyaka Ni'abudu wa Iyaka Nistari'in. Dina al-sirat wal-mustaqeem Sirat wal-lazina an-amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim wal-adhalin سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى الذي والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله جثاء أحوى سنكرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم جهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن فأت الذكرى سيتذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار القبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيى قد أفلها من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لا في الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمدا
Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Khutbah, inshallah, wa ta'ala, is recommended. You don't have to stay, but we ask the people that do stay, if they can remain quiet so that the believers can benefit, inshallah, ta'ala. Please, inshallah. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu, wa nasta'inuhu, wa nasta'gfiruhu, wa nasta'hdi. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroo'i anfusina, wa min siyyati a'malina. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يؤلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله ثم إما بعد 
This is Ibad inshallah wa ta'ala, the day of Eid. And even though it's a day of enjoyment, eating, being happy, being with friends and families, as you can see, the way of the Prophet wasallam is that we remember the law first. We have the Salah, and this shows that Eid is not just a day like the holidays of the non-Muslim, where they just have fun and they don't remember Allah, but rather remembrance of Allah is imperative at all times for the believers. So we ask, inshallah, respectfully that the brothers and sisters pay close attention so that you can draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this great day. Today, bi tabarakahu wa ta'ala, we want to talk about hub. Hub Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala. Loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ta'thirahu. And the effects of it. The loving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its impact upon the believers. As we just left the month of Ramadan, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you can become God-fearing. And there's no way to be God-fearing except that a person shows love for Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in his noble book, that book that we all have to believe in, لَمَّا قَالَ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Say to them, O Muhammad, as the Arabs of that time, they claimed that they loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by their tongue. So Allah told the Prophet to say to them, if that you claim that you love Allah, meaning bil haq in truth, then the way to exemplify, the way to show this love that you claim you have for your Lord is to follow me, the messenger. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed what would be the residual, what would be the payback or the reward, what would be the gain for those who love the law, and they followed the messenger to show that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, he will love you, and who doesn't want the love of Allah? He will love you and forgive you for your sins. And that Allah is Ghafur Rahim. So this is the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Ali Amran. And the ulama, Ahlul Ilm, they mentioned that this ayatul iman. This is the ayat that shows your iman because part of this loving Allah is following the messenger. So we want to talk about some of the benefits as we gain closeness, nearness to Allah in Ramadan. And we don't want to let that go as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ And race to the forgiveness of your Lord. وَجَنَّتُهَا عَوْدُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ نعم. And this forgiveness is unmeasurable. So much so that Allah mentioned the comparison, the distance, the length, the width of the heavens and the earth. Can you imagine a forgiveness this wide? Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of your sins. Even if you make shirk, major shirk with Allah, as long as you make repentance before you die. If you make major shirk with Allah, you take a God besides Allah, you do some worship to other than Allah, as long as you make tawbah, you repent before you die, even that Allah will forgive. So this is showing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it relates to loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَدْ جَاءَ عَنِ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ فِي الصَّحِيحَيْنِ And it comes on the Messenger of Allah, which is recorded in the Sahihain, meaning the Bukhari and Muslim. مِنْ Hadid Ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه بُونِيَ الْإِسْلَامِ عَلَى خَمْسٍ Islam is built upon five. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned clearly Islam is built upon five. Five things that make you a person with Islam. From the first he mentioned the Shahada. To bear witness that there is no deity to worship except Allah and that the Messenger Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. And this is part of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you bear witness to this. ثُمَّ ذَكْرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ As-Salaah And we know after that the Prophet mentioned Salah. And how much did we pray in Ramadan of the obligation and that which was extra. Gaining nearness to Allah, Tabarakullah Ta'ala. 
gaining the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while showing that we love the law. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet mentioned a zakah. And this is something again that purifies the individual. This is something that it will last until Yom al Qiyamah because it's tied to loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you purify yourself from stinginess, that you purify yourself from miserly actions and holding on to that which you can't take when you die. And that it is one of the greatest ways of effacing sins to give the zakah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet mentioned as Soma Ramadan, fasting in the month of Ramadan, fasting in the month that we just left. That pilgrimage to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's um, very special about these five pillars, all of them, all of them, they wipe away sins. And it's amazing how the Prophet mentioned those five as they're linked to one another and all of them, they're ways of erasing sins. The Shahada wipes away what comes before, I mean after. That, that which you had before, pardon me, in Jahiliyyah. Whatever you did, if you accept Islam, it is wiped away. Thumma Salah, your Salah, the same thing. Wipes away what's between the two of them. Then of course your Zakah. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has mentioned many places, وَعَقِيمُ Salah. Then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the psalm, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, a psalm ali wa ana ajazabih. Fasting is only for me. Meaning that when you fast correctly, nobody knows but Allah, thus your reward is great with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these are what makes your deen. You cannot have a deen without these things. And it's from the things that will purify the slave and this life in the hereafter. And it is from the ways, these five pillars of seeking and gaining Allah's forgiveness. And His mercy. And it is a way of gaining nearness to Allah and earning His Jannah, these five pillars. Why is it a way? What makes this special? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ja'ala al-qamps because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made these five things. That which is luzum and ala kulli. It is a necessity upon the human being in every time. And because all of these things it requires that we work together upon the truth. Your shahada requires that we work together as Muslims no matter, no matter where you may be and whatever time. Your salah, the same thing. Your fasting, your zakat, and the hajj. All of this is communal life. And for this reason, it is one of the greatest things that brings us together. It's timah, jama'atul haq. This is the gathering that we should be upon. Bi kalimatin wahida. Jama'a kalima baynana. And this is something that is not just physical as we're here together but it is a, 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 a creed, it is a way of life that ties you together so if you were 200 years ago that person that's upon what you were upon that was right, it ties you together, if you were in one land and the person is another land it links you together, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in the Jama Sagheer Al-Mara'a man ma'a man ahabba a person will be with the ones whom he loves. Meaning in this life, he believes like them. In this life, he shares the same goals as him. In this life, they're upon the same heart and ultimately in the Jannah and the hereafter. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَلَى فِي كِتَابِ وَعَتَّسِمُ بِحَبِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Allah has mentioned this fact in his book. There's no negating or turning the head to it. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and I command you all to hold to the rope of Allah. This means to put aside your differences. This means to avoid racism. This means to stay away from tribalism. This means to stay away from sectarianism. This means to be together. And one deen, one creed, 
one way as a believer, as the ummah, as the people of Al Islam. Thumma bayyan Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala nahi, tahreem, sarihan. Then Allah, so that there wouldn't be any confusion, mentioned the opposite of this in the prohibition. Wala tafarraku. And don't divide, don't argue, don't fight, don't make schisms and isms. And we have disobeyed Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala in that as a ummah. We have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that as a people. And for this reason, Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala loving him and loving the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is something that remains in every time and every place. Every time and every place. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in the hadith that's in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, In Allah Azza wa Jal, verily Allah the mighty the sublime, yukul yawm al qiyamah, that Allah he will say on the day of resurrection. Let us pay, pay close attention to this, put ourselves in the frame of mind with that person we made it to yawm al qiyamah. And that we love the Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala in this life by struggling to help one another practice the injunctions that Allah has given us. And we struggle to help one another avoid those injunctions. Put yourself, every individual, in this gathering, in this frame of mind. The Prophet said, Allah Azza wa Jal will say, Yawm al-Qiyamah. Aina mutahabuna bi jalali. Where are those who love for my sake? Where are those who used to love for my reward? Where are those who used to put aside their differences? Where are those who used to squash their egos? Where are those who admitted to Allah and then to one another the rectification is a must? Where are those who love for my sake alone? Yoma. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned a great scene from Yom Qiyama. Yoma. On the day when those people who love for Allah's sake, they will be given a shade of my throne. Imagine the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That throne that the narration of the prophet mentioned when the trumpet is blown for the standing, Musa will be holding on to one of the bottom parts of the throne, subhanAllah. And angels will be prostrating around that throne. That which is created and is above everything, including the seven heavens. Allah said, where are those who used to love for my sake? For my reward alone. Not because he's from my country. Not because he's like my color. Not because he's similar to me in height. Not because he takes up for me when I'm wrong. La. al mutahabuna Madam, be ajali. Those who love solely mutually for my reward. Where are those? Those that I will give a shade on the day of Yom Qiyamah from the shade of my arsh. Yom la zillu illa zilluhu. On a day when there will be no shade. And imagine being hot. No air conditioner. No Gatorade. No fan. No shelter except the shade that Allah will give for those who loved in this dunya, who loved in this life for his sake. وَهَكَذَا aida مِنْ hadith Abi Huraira in the Sunan Abi Dawood who hadith in Sahih and the Rasulullah min hadith and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam بَلْ هُوَ حَدِيثٍ مِنْ Umar ibn al-Khattab Rather is the hadith of Umar ibn al-Khattab he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna min abdi, inna min ibadihi, asaf. Inna min ibadihi, nasan, ma'hum bi anbiya'in. There will come a people on the day of judgment. There will come a people on the day of judgment, the Prophet said. 
And they are not from the prophets. They are not from the prophets. Wala shuhada'in. Neither are they from amongst those who die in the cause of Allah. And we don't mean terrorism as people say everything in this day, everything in his mama, everything in his wrong mind, everything in his harm is in the way of Allah. La. We mean they died being, be being murdered because of their worship to Allah. They died being attacked because of their worship to Allah. He died being robbed, him and his family. He got killed in the robbery. He died preaching. He died defending his village as they in invaded the, vision, the village. Not harming individuals because of what they believe. As this is not permissible in Islam. Even if they be Jew and Christian, you have no right by Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala. Wala dilil, wala burhan. Not a single piece of evidence to harm a person because of what they believe. Those that will come from the servants of Allah, Yomu Qiyama, the Prophet said they will not be from the prophets, neither will they be from those who die shuhada. This is showing you that they're going to have a higher status, as you will see in the hadith. Yaqbituhum an nasu li makanihim min Allah. These people that are not going to be from prophets, neither those who got killed in the way of Allah, people will be jealous of their status, Yomu Qiyama. And this includes prophets and those shuhada. They will wish they had those statuses, these yani, status of those people that the prophet is mentioning. Halu ya Rasulullah. The Sahaba that were there, they asked the prophet, O oh, Messiah of Allah, Please tell us, inform us who are these people. They're not going to be from the prophets, neither they're going to be from those who died in the way of Allah. Who are they? The people are going to be jealous about their status. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu wa ta'ala. They are those who used to love mutually by the command and the spirit of righteousness that Allah gave them to love one another because of. They are those that will love because of the single issue of deen, not because of the blood relations. As they say, blood is thicker than water. We debate that. Because here the Prophet Sallam is saying they're not going to be loving one another because of family ties. Neither are they going to be those who are from the prophets, neither are they going to be from those who were killed in the way of Allah. Then the prophet says, for wallahi, verily I swear by Allah, describing who are these people. Inna wajuhahum lanuran. Verily their faces in the prophet swore. This lamb is for swearing in the Arabic language. Verily their faces will be radiated on the day of judgment. And they will be upon light. And there are those people in the dunya, they didn't be afraid. They were not those who had fear when the people had fear. Loving for Allah to Baraku wa Ta'ala say, sometimes there's a fear factor because you have to sacrifice what you like for your brother. You have to sacrifice what you like for your sister. You have to be considerate of one another. And this takes some time people to the fear factor. They don't want to give up. Or they don't want to be in a situation where they're looked at the odd. The Prophet me mentioned these people who have this nur, this light yomu qiyamah, that they do not have this type of fear when the people are fearing. وَلَا يَحْزُونَ إِذَا حَزَنَ nas. Neither are they worried. Neither are they worried or with anxiety when the people have that. ثُمَّ تَلَا هَوْلَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى أَلَا أَوْلِيَا اللَّهِ لَا خُوفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ Then he quoted the verse, Or not those who are the awliya Allah, those who Allah has befriended because they love Allah, and they show that love by practicing, and Allah loves them, or not those, the people who don't have any fear, neither do they grieve. 
and this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that this is a reminder for us as we struggle in the month of Ramadan. We came out loving Allah to Baraku wa ta'ala and the result of that we gave love to one another. We came out obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we gain a nearness to Allah. Don't lose that nearness to Allah to Baraku wa ta'ala. Don't give up that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we fell short, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and bless us to be from amongst those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following his injunctions in any time, in any place, and that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mutually working together upon this. May Allah accept from you and us our, our fast. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.